Do you know the story of Little Red Riding Hood? That tale comes to us from the Black Forest in Europe. Hundreds of years ago, people on both sides of that forest in France and in Germany, they told that story to their children. Do you know the phrase con man? A con man is someone who tries to win your confidence so that he can trick you. Well, this book is a little bit about both those things, the Little Red Riding Hood story and the idea of winning somebody's confidence in order to trick them. And the question is, who is it? whom? So the title of the book is Flossie and the Fox. It is written by Patricia C. McIsaac, and the pictures are drawn by Rachel Isadora. Can feisty Flossie Finley outfox a fox, especially if she's never seen one before? Let's find out. Flossie! The sound of Big Mama's voice floated past the cabins in Sophie's quarters, round the smokehouse, beyond the chicken coop, all the way down to Flossie Finley. Flossie tucked away her straw doll in a hollow log, then hurried to answer her grandmother's call. Here I am, Big Mama, Flossie said after catching her breath. It was hot, hotter than a usual Tennessee August day. Big Mama stopped sorting peaches and wiped her hands and face with her apron. Take these to Ms. Viola, over at the McCutcheon place, she say, reaching behind her, and hand in Flossie a basket of fresh eggs. Seem like they've been troubled by a fox. Miss Viola's chickens be so scared, they can't even now lay a stone. Big Mama clicked her teeth and shook her head. Why come Mr. J.W. can't catch the fox with his dogs? Flossie asked putting a peach in her apron pocket to eat later. Every time they corner that old slickster, he gets away. I tell you, that fox is one sly critter. How do a fox look? Flossie asked. I just remember ever seeing one. Big Mama had to think a bit. Child, a fox be just a fox. But one thing for sure, that rascal loves eggs. He'll do most anything to get at some eggs. Flossie tucked the basket under her arm and started on her way. Don't tarry now, Big Mama called, and be particular about them eggs. Yes, am Flossie answered. The way through the woods was shorter and cooler than the road route under the open sun. What if I come upon a fox, thought Flossie. Oh, well. A fox be just a fox. That ain't so scary. Flossie commenced to skip along when she come upon a critter she couldn't recollect ever seeing. He was sitting inside the road like he was expecting somebody. Flossie skipped right up to him and nodded a greeting the way she'd been taught to do. Top of the morning to you, little missy, the critter replied. And what is your name? I be Flossie Finley, she answered with a proper curtsy. I reckon I don't know who you be either. Slowly the animal circled around Flossie. I am a fox, he announced, all the time eyeing the basket of eggs. He stopped in front of Flossie, smiled as best a fox can, and bowed at your service. Flossie rocked back on her heels, then up on her toes, back and forward, back and forward, carefully studying the creature who was claiming to be a fox. Nope, she said at last. I just purely don't believe it. You don't believe what? Fox asked, looking away from the basket of eggs for the first time. I don't believe you a fox, that's what. Fox's eyes flashed anger. Then he chuckled softly, 
My dear child, he said, sounding right disgusted, of course I am a fox. A little girl like you should be simply terrified of me. Whatever do they teach children these days? Flossie tossed her head in the air. Well, whatever you are, you sure think a heap of yourself, she said, and skipped away. Fox looked shocked. Wait, he called. Y you mean you're not frightened, not just a bit? Flossie stopped, then she turned and say, I ain't never seen a fox before, so why should I be scared of you, and I don't even know. Now you a real fox for a fact. Fox pulled himself tall. <clears throat> he cleared his throat. Are you saying I must offer proof that I am a fox before you will be frightened of me? That's just what I'm saying. Little Flossie skipped on through the piney woods while that fox fella rushed away looking for whatever he needed to prove he was really who he said he was. Meanwhile, Flossie stopped to rest beside a tree. Suddenly, Fox was beside her. I have the proof, he said. See, I have thick, luxurious fur. Feel for yourself. Fox leaned over for Flossie to rub his back. Hmm, hmm, feels like rabbit fur to me, she said to Fox. Shucks, you ain't no fox, you a rabbit. All the time trying to fool me. Me? A rabbit? He shouted. I have you know my reputation precedes me. I am the third generation of foxes who have outsmarted and outrun Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's fine hunting dogs. I have raided some of the best hen houses from Franklin to Madison. Rabbit indeed. I am a fox, and you will act accordingly. Flossie hopped to her feet. She put her free hand on her hip and patted her foot. Unless you can show you a fox, I'll not accord you nothing. And without further ceremony, she skipped away. Down the road a piece, Flossie stopped by a bubbly spring. She knelt to get a drink of water. Fox came up to her and said, I have a long pointed nose. Now that should be proof enough. Don't prove a thing to me. Flossie picked some wild flowers. Come to think of it, she said, matter of fact, like, rats got long pointed noses. She snapped her fingers. That's it. You a rat trying to pass yourself off as a fox. <laughs> that nearby took Fox's breath away. I beg your pardon, he gasped. You can beg all you wanna, Flossie say, skipping on down the road. That still don't make you no fox. <gasps> I'll teach you a thing or two, young lady, Fox called after her. You just wait and see. Before long, Flossie came to a clearing, a large orange tabby was sunning on a tree stump. Hi, pretty kitty, the girl say, and rubbed the cat behind her ears. Meanwhile, Fox slipped from behind a clump of bushes. Since you won't believe me when I tell you I'm a fox, he said stiffly, perhaps you will believe that fine feline creature toward whom you seem to have some measure of respect. Flossie looked at the cat and winked her eye. He sure used a heap of words, she whispered. Fox beckoned for Cat to speak up. Cat jumped to a nearby log and yawned and stretched. Then she answered, This is a fox because he has sharp claws and yellow eyes, she purred. Fox seemed satisfied. But Flossie looked at Cat. She looked at Fox. Then once more at both, just to be sure. She said, All due respect, Miss Cat, but both y'all got sharp claws and yellow eyes, so that don't prove nothing. 
Except in both y'all be cats. Oh, Fox went to howling and running around in circles. He was plumb beside himself. I am a fox and I know it, he shouted. This is absurd. Don't call for you to use that kind of language, Flossie said, and she skipped away. Wait, wait, Fox followed, pleading. I just remembered something. It may be the solution to this, this horrible situation. Good, it's about time. I have a bushy tail. Fox seemed to perk up. That, that's right, he said. All foxes are known for their fluffy, bushy tails. That has got to be adequate proof. It ain't got to be. You got a bushy tail. So do squirrels. Flossie pointed to one overhead, leaping from branch to branch in the treetops. Here, have a bite of peach, she said, offering Fox first bite of her treat. Oh, but Fox was crying like a natural-born baby. No, 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 he sobbed. If, if I promise you I'm a fox, won't that do? Flossie shook her head. No. Oh, woe is me, Fox hollered. I may never recover my confidence. Flossie didn't stop walking. That's just what I've been saying. You're just an old confidencer. Come tell me you was a fox, then can't prove it. Shame on you. Long about that time, Flossie and the fox came out of the woods. Flossie cupped her hands over her eyes and caught sight of McCutcheon Quarters and Miss Viola's cabin. Fox didn't notice a thing. He just followed behind Flossie, begging to be believed. Give me one last chance, he pleaded. Flossie turned on her heels. Okay, but just this once more. Fox tried not to whimper, but his voice was real unsteady like. I have sharp teeth, and I can run exceedingly fast. He waited for Flossie to say something. Slowly, the girl rocked from heel to toe, back and forward. You know, she finally said, smiling, it don't make much difference what I think anymore. What? Fox asked. Why? Because there's one of Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's hounds behind you. He's got sharp teeth and can run fast, too. And by the way that hound's looking, it's all over for you. With a quick glance back, Fox dashed toward the woods. The hound knows who I am, he shouted. But I'm not worried. I sure can outsmart and outrun one of Mr. J.W. McCutcheon's miserable mutts any old time of the day, because, like I told you, I am a fox. I know, said Flossie. I know. And she turned toward Ms. Viola's with a basket of eggs safely tucked under her arm. Well, if you like that story, Pat McIsaac wrote about a hundred stories like that, and you don't have to look too hard to, to find them. She grew up in Tennessee, finished her life in Missouri, and has so many wonderful stories. The artist, Rachel Isadora, has her own we website. You just use her name, that's the URL, and you can find out more about her career as a person who illustrates this one. A North American story that's like the story... Little Red Riding Hood, which comes from Europe. And a story about a trickster. Who tricks whom in the end? Well, that has been Flossie and the Fox. Written by C. McIsaac. All the illustrations drawn by Rachel Isadora. <laughs>